It's a remarkable story of God's dealings with my soul. Let me take you back approximately 40 years. I really believe it's a little longer than that, perhaps 43, 44. But I can't give the exact date, but I know it was 40 plus. I was a young evangelist in Ireland, doing my best to serve the Lord. And uh, the Lord started to deal with me. And I remember I would stay up to one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, or four o'clock in the morning, walking up and down. The Bible says they shall walk up and down in my name. And I'd walk up and down, calling upon God, telling him I wanted to get to know him better and better and better. And then he started to deal with me. At that time, we just had one child, Ruth Ann. She was a baby, of course. And Maureen and Ruth Ann would be sleeping back in the bedroom. I was walking up and down the, the living room, quite a large one, uh, talking to God. Then this dealing started. I didn't understand it. But I could see a sanctuary. Now, I was more of an evangelist than a pastor, but I could see this beautiful sanctuary. But then the next night, I would see more of it. And the next night, I would see more of it. And God would take maybe a week or two. I didn't take the exact number of days, but it was a week or two or three at the most. Uh, to solidly fix in my mind that God wanted me to have this sanctuary to praise and to glorify his name. Finally, I felt that that was complete and I just rejoiced and I didn't know what it meant, uh, but I rejoiced in it, continued praying. And then the next thing, maybe a week or two later, he started to deal with me about another building. This time it was a restaurant. I could see a restaurant. I wasn't trying to see these things. I was surprised when the Holy Spirit brought it to my mind. But I could see it. It was beautiful, served delicious food, and that we should have a beautiful dining facility. Well, that went on for a week or two because I didn't know anything about the restaurant business. But God was telling me, I'm just a young preacher. And I say, wow, what, 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 what is this, Lord? And it was solid and it was real as if God was saying, I am going to show you what I want you to have. And then there would be a little let up, maybe for a week or two. I would meditate and think about the restaurant and the sanctuary. And then something else started. I could see a large facility, which we called at that time the Christian Education Building. And it was wonderful, and what it taught and so forth, what the people could be taught inside its doors. So that took several weeks to come together for this young preacher. Then more time went by, and then God hadn't finished. It looked like he was wanting me to have some kind of a campus. And I knew that it would become a beehive of activity with various services, prayer meetings, water baptism, Holy Communion, and, and regular teaching and so forth. But this was all just in my mind. And I didn't say anything to anybody at this time because I had enough sense to know the thing was still developing. This now was stretching over a number of months. Then, when I thought it was over, God would start to deal with me about in-house television production. 45 years ago in Belfast, there's no Christian television. It's crazy. In fact, I remember, and this is a little sidebar, I remember my daughter Ruth Ann, who's such a fantastic blessing in this ministry. I remember her as a little girl, just a child, before she ever sang one solo. I remember this day in our home in Belfast, picking her up, set her on my knee, and I said, my darling Ruth Ann, I said, one day you will sing for me on American Christian television. She never sang before. We weren't in America. We weren't on television. It all seemed to be crazy. But now I'm seeing 
television production so that we don't have to go outside, but we could do it all in-house. Wow, that took a while too. For what do I know about the technicalities of television? I don't, but I could see it clearly. And then as if that wasn't enough, then I could see in-house production of getting the word out. In those days, of course, it was tapes. Nowadays, it's DVDs and CDs. But there was another week or two or three dealing with me of the necessity to have this in a house and to get it out to the people. Then the next thing, are you ready for this? The next thing I saw was in-house printing. We would print our own notes. Wouldn't have to go to an outside printer. And, and I could see a wonderful printing machine and, and uh, could do it, staple it, do it in color, all that stuff. I could see it. It lasted for weeks. Finally, after several months of God dealing with me, I wrote all these things down. Five or six, maybe eight or nine. And there was another one I'm going to tell you about in a moment. I wrote them down and I shared them with people. Well, it seemed to be obvious. God wanted me to have this. So what did I do? I was very young. I went out and bought 23 acres of land just outside Belfast in a suburb called Glen Gormley. Beautiful acres right beside a, a well-known, well-traveled highway. 23 acres of prime lamb, land. Uh, we put up a first building, a smaller one, uh, to just get started. And uh, you're going to get a shock now. One day, when we were holding meetings in that building, I was walking from the back up to the front. I was walking up uh, the left-hand aisle. In fact, Pastor Wooly Dick, one of the pastors in Ireland, reminded me of this just recently. He said, do you remember what happened to you, Leslie? I said, I do. I'll never forget it. For as I was walking up the aisle, suddenly the whole thing, the whole vision just lifted off me and it was gone. You talk about being puzzled. I didn't question the Lord. I didn't understand it. But after God shown me all this and after me buying the 23 acres, just getting up one building, we had the start of a second one, but just one, and uh, then the whole thing's gone. I didn't understand it. Today, as I look back, I can only relate it to one thing. The Apostle Paul one time said, if you do not want what I've got, what I can give you, then I turn to the Gentiles. I turn to the Gentiles. Then, over a period, God led us to America. Under direct instructions, I was not thinking God was leading us for the fulfillment of the vision. I just had to leave the vision alone because it wasn't happening. It was off me. I didn't know, I didn't understand, but I never questioned the Lord. And so we were in America for a while and ministered in Kissimmee, that's beside Disney World, in Clearwater, and then finally dropped anchor here in Tarpon Springs, Florida. Now, hold that point for a moment, hold that thought, and let me tell you this. There was one other thing that God dealt with me about in Ireland, and I have to complete what was the full vision. And it was accommodation. What did that mean? Was it to build a motel or to build houses, chalets, cottages, whatever it was, but people would be able to come and stay a few nights or a week or whatever and be part of that beehive of activity where they would hear truth, truth, truth. That was part of the list. And then I published the list over in Ireland and told others about it. I got the 23 acres, started the first building, and now I'm gone. I knew I was in God's will leaving it. And maybe it was because we went through so much persecution. People turned against us. Newspapers, TVs told lies upon us. So 
Maybe it was. If you don't want what I have for you, then I'll turn to the Gentiles. We were here for quite a while in America. And then, would you hear this? Just about, I'm guessing two and a half, three months ago at the most, Morning and I were having lunch in a restaurant called the Bahama Breeze. We always share a meal there and enjoy it. It's kind of a pasta meal. Anyway, the little girl, the waitress, came up. You know how they say. She said, my name's Beth, and I'll be taking care of you. And it shot out of me. Do you know what your name means? And she said, no, I don't. I said, well, Beth in the Bible means the house of something. The house of Bethel, the house of God, Bethlehem, the house of bread. Oh, she said, I never knew that before. I tell you that part because that was the only thing that you could call spiritual that happened. She left, caught us the meal, brought it back. Morning and I are sitting eating. And then that voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. That voice superseded Maureen's and mine. Superseded. It's happened to me before. I can't explain it to anybody, but it superseded it. And what happened? As clear as a bell, as they say, God said, I want you to build me ten. I'm just going to use the word accommodations. In Ireland, you might call it a cottage. Here, you might call it a villa. In fact, we have settled on villa. Ten houses, whatever you call them, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the, what is it, the west of our property here, we have at least eight or nine acres which are undeveloped. There's a beautiful pond up there, they tell me, and we're going to start to develop it and to build these buildings which will house people accommodations, and uh, so that people will be able to come in, wearied and worn maybe from the battles of life, and get inspired with what's going on here. And uh, then, 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 it struck me. Look what we've got. I, honestly, why would I say anything different? This is the sanctuary I saw. The very one I'm sitting in, this was it. Same size, approximately, that I saw. Then I remembered, we have the most beautiful dining facility. That looks exactly what I saw 45 years ago. Then we have this magnificent Christian education center. It's called the Tabernacle in the Wilderness, with all the Bibles in the sanctuary and in the tabernacle. That was what I saw. Then, right now I'm telecasting in-house I saw that too, but we have it. We have in-house production of DVDs and CDs. We have in-house production of printing. This is the vision. I didn't know that God was fulfilling it. I never put two and two together. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. And even regarding this sanctuary, I didn't connect it to 45 years ago. That seemed to die and I had no explanation, so what do you do? You move on. Now I turn to the Gentiles. It turned out the Gentiles were the Americans. And what a blessing uh, the people have been here, kind people and loving people and supportive people. Very, very helpful. So what do we have to do now? Well, it looks like we've got everything except the 10 buildings to house people. I'm not calling it a hotel or a motel. It's not that. But it's, well, it's, it's houses of some kind. Uh, we still have to talk, of course, uh, to the, the engineer, the surveyor, the architect. There's so much work to be done. But I'm telling you about it just after I got this understanding so that you would pray. Please pray for the wisdom of God. I can honestly say up to this time, like Paul speaking to King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And God has surprised me by bringing it all to pass, except the 10 buildings that we need. And I'm asking you to pray.